My name is Tina Rocha, and my husband, Mike Kobus, and I own Cerulean Arts. We've shown Michelle Sasla's work three times now. We've seen her work grow over the years, and this is the best out of all the three shows. We just love the textures in her work. I really get a sense of her emotions and what's going on in her life. It just really resonates, and I think that's why it is something that people can respond to. No matter where they are in their life, it really speaks to them. Hi, I'm Michelle Saslau, and I'm here at Cerulean Arts on Ridge Avenue. Most of the work, you'll see some kind of a vessel, a boat. And a boat, for me, is a metaphor for journey. Journey in life or journey towards death. Do I have a preconceived idea? I want to be able to use a vessel. I would like to have a figure, but I don't always know how it's going to work. But in the end, the job is to get the figure and the vessel in the context where it feels finished to me. I do a lot of layering. I put the first layer down and I may paint over that. Sometimes I will use netting, material from old curtains, and lay that on top, maybe block out some of the work and spray through that to get that texture. And then sometimes I will take the painting to the sink and wash everything down. So it's texture and the illusion of texture and blocking things out, taking a chance and there's nothing to lose because I can wash it all down. I love being on the water. I love snorkeling. So I like being on top in a kayak or a canoe. Little boats, very nice. You're close to the water. It feels very natural to me. When I was snorkeling for the very first time, I actually said out loud, I am home. And I laughed. Under the water, I laughed because it felt so natural to me to be under the water. Having the fish go around me like, I wasn't there, they didn't care. Amazing. And seeing turtles go by and then the baby following the turtle. There's nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. My influences were Jackson Pollock, German Expressionist, Lee Krasner, Andre Masson, Edward Monk and Kurt Schwitters and Joseph Cornell. Morris Graves has one little piece of a bird that he wrapped in line, which is just beautiful. It just has everything that I want in my work. The peace and quiet of it. Michelle Soslau is one of those artists that you can't help but like. It is a real treat for me, an identical twin, to film an artist who is the mother of identical twins. She told me she'd pick up one baby daughter, pat her on the back, but it was the other one who would burp. So we had one crib, and I said, we've got to put fingernail polish on one because we're going to mix it all up. They would lay in bed, and they would suck each other's thumbs. Like, you'd go in there, and they'd be like that. John's a twin. <laughs> Michelle's education in art was a meandering affair, including a stint at Bucks County Community College, but it culminated in a master's degree from the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. The great Dan Miller became like a father of art to her. She also studied at the Barnes Foundation. I asked her how Dr. Barnes would have looked at one of her paintings. Barnes wants you to look at what's there doesn't want you to make any attributions. He did not want you to say that, oh, I, that dress is beautiful, I used to have a dress like that. He wants you to look at the painting and, and see what the artist was interested in. So in this painting, as a foreign scholar, I have to say, he's interested in the color blue. He's interested in these sort of curlicues, which kind of repeat. But Barnes would not allow me to say, oh, that looks like my grandmother, and it looks like she might have been in a wedding or she's dressed up for an affair, because you don't know that. That's in your head. Barnes wants you to deal with the artist. So it's not necessarily the portrait of Miss Havisham from Great Expectations that I Correct. thought it was? Correct. Michelle is such a positive person, I decided to probe her darker side. 
Could you explain the subject of the painting behind you? I listen to the news a lot. I'm not happy with what I hear. I am very worried about my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. And I feel like if we don't start realizing what will happen as a result of war and global warming, regardless of which side you're on, this is what will be. We will be the ribs of something that used to be great and now isn't because we're not paying attention to the right things. I am very influenced by social issues and political issues. This is just the carcass. And then I guess the light, I don't know if it's coming or going. Haunting. It's haunting, yeah. It haunts me. I did some paintings based on 9-11, but then this one came out. If this keeps going on, like, where are we? This is the destruction of our world as we're watching. And it's entitled, what now? Like, what do we do now? I lost my father about 35 years ago. Before he was buried, they wrapped him in a shroud. My sister opened the casket, I looked at the shroud, and I was wrapping things for years. There's one painting in here about him, and the boat is his journey off this world as we know it. I haven't wrapped recently. I had Jillian Jagger as a critic at PAFA. I showed her all of my wrapped work, and she said to me, time to unwrap that work. That was 10, 11 years ago. I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. And I started with a picture of myself. That's me when I was, I don't know, before I was two or something. I'm hoping that's going to be the impetus for more work where I go backwards and unwrap things. Do you fear death? No. I fear, I fear being sick, but I don't fear dying. I think I've been very lucky. Have you encouraged her over the years? I've been there to support her, and she doesn't need encouragement. She, she's absolutely wonderful on her own. And I don't have any, um, I don't have any regrets. So I don't fear death, no. Somebody insisted that I go to a meeting, mothers of multiple births. And there wasn't one person there that I thought was, you know, all together. And one woman said, I have twin boys. Before they were one, they had dismantled the crib, shoved the crib out the window upstairs, and shoved the mattress out the window, and I never went back. <laughs>